Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel The A to List. Here we learn English with joy. Today in this video we are going to learn about voice change. One of the most important topics in English grammar. Well, learning voice change entirely is a really large topic, so we have divided our entire lesson into separate sections. See. In our first part, we will learn a simple concept of what voice is and what are its types. In our second part, we will learn some other aspects of English grammar that we really need to know before we start to learn voice. And in our third section, we will learn the voice change of different types of sentences. Now, let's have a look at the types of voice. So far we have learned that there are two types of voices active and passive and now you can see here another one is called quasi passive now let's see what a quasi passive is the sentence which is active in form but passive in meaning or sense is called a quasi passive note the example the bell rings the bell is the subject here and rings is its verb uh, and the form of the verb agrees with the form of the subject the subject is in third person singular number that's why the verb takes an s with it so in feature this sentence is totally an active voice now note the features first by form this sentence is active it looks like ram plays the bell rings ram plays looks like the same active voice like but by meaning it is passive for the bell cannot ring on its own it is always rung by someone else so far it was part 1 of the process of learning voice Here we have learned what actually voice is and what are its types. Now let's start part 2 of our study. In part 2, we are going to discuss those topics of English grammar that are really going to be helpful in learning voice. Now, let's have a look at the topics. C. Number 1, the be verbs. We need to develop the knowledge of be verbs. Number 2, conjugation of verbs. That means the three forms of the verbs. Number 3, we need to identify in a sentence the subject verb and its object number 4 the types of objects how many objects are there in english grammar number 5 transitive and intransitive verbs this is perhaps the most important topic number 6 we need to know the auxiliary verbs number 7 the causative verbs number 8 the pronouns subjective and objective forms number 9 the reflexive and emphatic pronouns number 10 the tense and the final one number 11 is the types of sentences now let's start with the be verbs in english the total be verbs are five in present tense in singular there are two am and is and in plural there is one are and in past tense there are two in singular was and in plural were now take a note the be verbs are used as auxiliary the snake is killed i am reading you were to go the sun is set in all these sentences the be verbs are used as auxiliary to some main verb and now in the following examples the be verbs are used as main verbs see ram is my friend here the verb is above of incomplete predication and god is here the verb is above of complete predication here is means actually to exist now take the note the be verbs are always intransitive that means they do not need an object after them to complete the sense actually what they take after them are its complements now the conjugation of verbs this is actually nothing but the study of the three forms of the verbs it is because while converting a sentence from active to passive we need the past participle form of the verbs in this case please take extra care of the irregular verbs now note some examples break broke broken go went gone sit sat sat take took taken etc etc and for some other examples please consult a good book now let's see how to identify the subject verb and object in a given sentence let's see example 1 he plays football here the verb is plays and if we question it with who we get the answer he that's why he is the subject to the verb plays and if we question it with what we get the answer football and that's why the word football is the object to the verb plays Now come to the next example. He gave me the pen. Here the verb is gave, and if we question it with who, we get the answer he. That's why he is the subject to the verb gave, and if we question it with what, we find the answer, the pen. 
that's why the pen is the object to the verb give and there is another object if we question it with whom we get the answer me that's why this verb in this sentence have two objects now take a note to find out the subject question the verb with who to find out the object question the verb with whom and what now have a look at the types of objects there are basic five types of objects that we need to know they are direct objects indirect objects retained objects factative objects and cognate object let's see in short first the direct object the objects that we find by questioning the verb with what are called the direct objects for example he plays football he plays he plays what plays football that's why the word football is a direct object to the verb plays now indirect object the object that we find by questioning the verb with whom in the examples see he gave him the book here him is the indirect object to the verb gave and now in the next example he told me the story here the subject is he the verb is told and uh, he told what the story the story is a direct object and he told the story to whom me me is the indirect object now take a note in the sentences above the direct and indirect objects are different from each other in sentence 1 the book was the direct object and him was the indirect object and in sentence 2 the story was the direct object and me is indirect object and these two objects are totally different from each other now see what a retained object is let's see in the example he told me a story this is an active voice and it has two passive forms a story was told me by him and i was told a story by him now take a note as the sentence in active voice has two objects it can be changed into passive in two ways in such cases either of the objects is turned or made into subject in the passive voice and the other object retains at its place as it is in the active voice and this object that retains is called retained object in answer a me is the retained object and in answer b the story is the retained object now let's see what a factative object is uh, note the example they made me captain in this sentence the subject is they the verb is made the indirect object is me and the captain is a factative object now take a note the sentence has two objects me and captain it seems that captain is the direct object and me is indirect object but remember i told you before that the direct and indirect objects are totally different from each other but here we and captain refer to the same person here the word captain is used as just a compliment so the factative objects are never used as subjects in the passive voice as in the following example see uh, if we convert the given sentence into passive like this captain was made me by them that's the wrong expression the correct answer will be i was made captain by them now we are going to see what a cognate object is note the examples example one he ran a race example two they slept a sound sleep example three he sang a song in sentence one in sentence a ran ran what ran a race he slept they slept what they slept a sound sleep and he sang he sang what he sang a song now note the features have a look here all the objects are a direct object in nature number two by origin they are similar with the verb that means the object and the verb are derived from the same root so they are quite same in meaning now let's see what a transitive and an intransitive verb is a transitive a verb that requires an object to make the sense clear is called a transitive in the following sentences see i read history he plays a football here the accent of the verb starts with i and ends in history and in the second example the accent of the verb plays starts with he and ends in football now the intransitive an intransitive verb is that doesn't require any object to make the sense clear now note the examples birds fly he goes to school now take a note the be verb is always intransitive for they do not take object after them rather they take just compliments and note number two normally the verbs of motion like go run swim fly walk etc are always intransitive 
Now, see what is an auxiliary verb is. These are the helping verbs. They sit before the main verb and help it to form tense, voice and mood. Note the example one. I will go to school. Here the auxiliary is will and that helps the main verb go to form the future tense. In example two, the snake was killed by Ram. Here the auxiliary verb to be helps to form the voice. And in example three, don't go there. Here the auxiliary verb helps the main verb to form the mood here, the imperative mood. Note, in total there are 12 auxiliaries as to do verb, to be verb, to have verb, shall, will, can, may, must, ought, need, dare and used to. Now let's see what a causative verb is. Note the examples, I eat, the second example, I feed the child. Now take the notes. In sentence 1, the subject performs the accent to his own, that is, here I eat to fill his own belly. This is a simple verb. And in sentence number two, but in sentence number two, the subject performs the accent to someone else. These verbs are causative. Now take some other examples. Simple verb it, causative form fit. Simple verb it, causative form show, walk, walk, lie, lay. Now this is an important topic learning the subjective and objective forms of pronouns. Have a look. I, me. I is the subjective form and its objective form is me. Then comes we, us, you, you, he, him, she, her and they, them. Now take a note. So, if a pronoun in a sentence comes before the verb, it should be in the subjective form and if it comes after the verb, it should be in its objective form. Now let's see what are reflexive and emphatic pronouns. The reflexive and emphatic pronouns are always the self pronouns such as in singular form myself from I, yourself from you, himself from he and herself from she and in the plural forms ourselves from we, yourselves from you and themselves from they. Now, note, he killed himself, he has a self pronoun has become the object in the sentence. Note 2. The subject reflects itself in the object. These are called reflexive pronouns. Another one. He himself killed the snake. Take a note. Here the self pronoun isn't used as the object. It sits just after the subject and emphasizes it. These are called emphatic pronouns. Now come to a very important part. The types of sentences. See. A sentence can be divided into two ways, constructionally and functionally. Constructionally, a sentence is of three types and functionally, a sentence is of five types. Constructionally, they are simple, complex and compound and functionally, they are assertive, interrogative, imperative, optative and exclamatory. Now, see. A simple sentence is a sentence which has only one subject and one predicate or a sentence which has only one finite verb in it. See the examples, we play cricket, here we is the subject and its predicate is play cricket and there is only one finite verb in it that is play. In the next example I want to buy a book, here the subject is I and the predicate is want to buy a book and there is only one finite verb want and here to buy is an infinitive. A compound sentence is a sentence which is made up of two or more main clauses and they are joined by a coordinating conjunction as give me liberty or give me death. In this sentence, two main clauses give me liberty and give me death. These are two main clauses and they are combined to each other with one coordinating conjunction that is or. Now, a complex sentence is a sentence which consists of one main clause and one or more subordinate clause or clauses. As you can see, I believe that he is honest. In this sentence, I believe is the principal clause or main clause and that he is honest is the subordinate clause. Now have a look at the functional types of a sentence. Type 1, assertive. It makes some statement. See for example, example 1, man is mortal. Example 2, India is an independent country. Example 3, we cannot live without water. Now interrogative. An interrogative sentence is one that asks a question. See for example, will you come tomorrow? Now take a note. 
it is a simple question it starts with an auxiliary verb it is yes or no type in answer now take this one what are you reading it is a wh question it starts with a wh word and it is informative in answer that means we can't answer it in only yes or no rather we have to give some specific information to answer it now see an imperative it makes an order request advice etc for example stand up on the bench it's an order please give me the pen it's a request obey your elders it's an advice now have a look the optative sentence it expresses wish blessings or prayers for example may god bless you wish you a happy new year may you be happy etc and the final one is the exclamatory sentence it expresses some emotion such as what a beautiful bird alas your father is no more so guys so far it was our first video on learning voice change though it was a preparatory part so make preparations at home and wait for the next to come the main part converting voice of different types of sentences so dear make preparations at home work hard and wait for the next stay tuned thank you